The Haunting of Ward 13. It was a moonless night when Sarah first stepped through the imposing gates of Briarwood Psychiatric Hospital. The towering Gothic structure loomed in the darkness, its shadowy spires clawing at the heavens. She shivered as a cold wind swept through the courtyard, carrying with it the whispers of the past. Sarah, a young and idealistic child psychologist, had been assigned to Ward 13, the most notorious ward in the entire hospital. It was where the institution housed its youngest and most troubled patients, those whose minds teetered on the edge of madness. As she made her way through the dimly lit corridors, the echoing footsteps of her new colleagues seemed to fade into the distance. The heavy wooden door to Ward 13 creaked open, revealing a scene that sent a chill down Sarah's spine. The ward was a labyrinth of shadowy cells, each containing a small barred window through which dim moonlight filtered. The air was thick with the scent of old wood and despair. The children, mere whispers of their former selves, sat in their cells, some rocking back and forth, others muttering incomprehensible words to themselves. Among them was Emily, a seven-year-old girl with long, tangled hair and haunted eyes that seemed to hold the weight of the world. Sarah had read Emily's file, a litany of trauma and tragedy that no child should ever endure. Abandoned by her parents and left to the mercy of a cruel world, Emily had been admitted to Briarwood after a series of violent outbursts at her previous foster home. As Sarah approached Emily's cell, the girl's eyes locked onto hers, and a shiver ran down her spine. Are you my new friend? Emily asked in a soft, eerie voice. Sarah knelt down and smiled gently. Yes, I'm here to help you, Emily. My name is Dr. Sarah. Emily's face lit up with a strange kind of innocence. I've been waiting for you, Dr. Sarah. The others said you'd come. Sarah glanced around the ward, her unease growing. Who told you I was coming, Emily? The girl pointed to the corner of her cell, where an old tattered doll sat propped up against the wall. Its eyes, once bright and blue, had faded with age, and its stitched-on smile seemed frozen in a perpetual grimace. That's Charlotte, Emily said, her voice barely above a whisper. She's my friend. She tells me things. Sarah's curiosity was piqued. What kind of things does Charlotte tell you? Emily's gaze shifted, as if she were listening to a distant voice. She tells me about the others, the ones who came before you. She says they didn't stay long. Sarah couldn't help but feel a shiver of unease. She knew that Ward 13 had a dark history, and the stories of previous doctors and nurses who had mysteriously left their positions were whispered in hushed tones among the staff. Over the next few weeks, Sarah began to unravel the mysteries of Ward 13, the children's conditions were more than just the result of trauma. They seemed to be connected by a pervasive and malevolent presence that hung in the air like a shroud. Emily, in particular, exhibited disturbing behavior. She would often speak to Charlotte for hours on end, her voice growing more and more detached from reality. Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that Charlotte was more than just an ordinary doll. One night, as Sarah made her rounds, she heard a soft, haunting melody echoing through the ward. It was a child's voice singing a lullaby that sent chills down her spine. The source of the song was Emily's cell, and when Sarah peered inside, she gasped in horror. Emily was sitting on her bed, cradling Charlotte in her arms. But it was no ordinary doll. Charlotte's eyes were no longer faded. They glowed with an otherworldly light, and her stitched-on smile had transformed into a malevolent grin. Emily, what are you doing? Sarah whispered, her heart pounding in her chest. Emily turned to her, her eyes empty and soulless. Charlotte says it's time for you to meet the others, Dr. Sarah. They're waiting for you. As Sarah watched in terror, the other children in the ward began to stir, their eyes fixed on her with a hunger that sent a wave of dread coursing through her veins. The haunting lullaby grew louder, filling the air with a sinister melody. In that moment, Sarah realized that she had stumbled upon something far more sinister than she could have ever imagined. She had unlocked a doorway to a world of darkness that threatened to consume her, and there was no escape. The children advanced on her, their movements eerily synchronized, their eyes glowing with an unnatural light. Sarah's screams were drowned out by the haunting lullaby as she was dragged into the abyss of Ward 13, never to be seen again. In the days that followed, the staff of Briarwood Psychiatric Hospital searched for Dr. Sarah, but she had vanished without a trace. The children of Ward 13 were returned to their empty existence, their secrets buried deep within the walls of the institution. And as for Emily and her malevolent friend Charlotte, they continued their eerie conversations in the darkness, 
whispering secrets that only they could understand. Their voices a haunting echo of the horrors that lurked within the haunted corridors of Ward 13.